Well, hi, welcome to the show, Town TV viewers, and over Salisbury and all those points southeast, north, and west. It's August Bank Holiday Monday, and we're at Andover Rugby Club. It's a great day here today because we've got a rock, blues, and beer festival, plus a fun day for all the children. So um, stay with Town TV, keep watching today's events. Jason, point the camera over there. You can see the uh, stage just being erected. They're doing sound checks. It's early on, it's 12 o'clock. Um, Nobody's, I haven't really seen anybody with a pint yet, I suppose it's a bit early for, uh, for well, for drinking, but uh, anyway, there's plenty of other things to do, there's um, all sorts of stuff, really. Garlic bread, hot donuts, tacos, music stands, and over there to the right, Jace, is the beer tent. No doubt we may be uh, visiting that later and seeing some real ales, but anyway, um, keep watching Town TV, keep watching the Blues Festival coming from the Andover Rugby Ground. David Penfrain, what are you doing dressed up like this? Uh, well, you shouldn't ask me that because I really don't know. <laughs> really no, I'm just having a good time tonight, <laughs> today. Tell yeah. me about People Eater. People Eater. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like an amalgamation of a couple of things that were going on in Andover. Yeah. It's um, uh, three of us are from the ex Delirious. What's happened to Delirious? Well, it's John. Finito. Uh, why? We why? just thought we'd. We'd been going long enough as Delirious and nothing had happened and it was just getting a bit stale and we thought, uh, you know, we really want to be serious about this, so, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I say, <laughs> <let's> <laughs> he says, so, but, uh, yeah, no, just for change of direction, new band, total new, total total new this is it, yeah. the new us, we're out to kick ass. So what is it, is it, is it grunge or what, or what? Um, no, no, no. no it's, it's rock, but it's more, I don't know, just want to be a bit more hip. Yeah, yeah, in there right. in the scene. Yeah, hip rock. Yeah. Who's this? I'm Steve. I'm the, singer. Singer. Boy, Steve. I'm the new singer. He's great. Is he? Where are you from, Steve? I'm singer. from Andover. Oh, yeah? He's yeah. The new singer yeah. In, the new band. in the new band. New singer, new yeah. band. It's yeah. totally new band. It's Do you play anything or work. just sing? No, I just sing. Well, I try to, yeah. Okay. Whereabouts in Andover do you live? Um, just over in town, on Knight's Way. Right. So, yeah. Look in there, say hello to all your mates. Hello, everyone. I'm, the, I'm singing. This is the band. They're on in just a minute. So. Two minutes. Are you the first? Are you the first band on? No, no we're no, second. 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 Oh, but we missed. Well, we missed the first one. Well, go for it. So where would you be at a rock festival without a beer festival? And so we've come along to speak to Dave Tenning, I think. Dave, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? <laughs> how long have you been here? All night? Well, just about, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell me what you have to do today to get, to get a drink at, at a beer festival. Right, well, you come here, yeah. you buy your tokens. Yeah. They're seven for five pounds, 14 yeah. for a tenner, which give, and each token gives you a half a pint of beer. Great, so what happens if you want a glass of wine? Glass of wine, they're in the tent next to it, and that's cash over the bar. All right, okay, great. So, how long has it taken to organise all this uh, rock festival this year? A long time. About a year. About a year. <laughs> it's a year since the last one. That's right, well, we started straight after the last yeah. one. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but a fair bit of organising. Yeah. It's, it's very professionally organised, isn't it, of course, of being well, under a regular... we've got Lawrence to thank for that. Come here, Lawrence. Where's Lawrence? He's hiding around the corner. He won't come and... Yes, he will. He will come and speak to me. Lawrence Leakes, are you to blame for all this? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm to blame. I'll put my hands up to it completely, Alan. <laughs> You've got a great lineup today, there, haven't you? Yeah. And you've got uh, purple. No, it's not purple. Peter, it, people is people, people eater. Eat just eat started. That's the old yeah. delirious. Just started. Yeah, and then we've got gravity, which is uh, delirious's new band. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got uh, the desperate bicycles yeah. and jump. Yeah. Sammy Weddy. Uh, Tell me about Sammy Weddy. He's from Ireland, isn't he? Is that right? Yeah, really big in Ireland. Yeah. Um, big rock and blues trio. Yeah. It's 
plane all over the world. I think he's just about to go on tour to China. Um, and he should be here later on. He should be flying in from Ireland today. And you got the local band SAD who are doing really well at the moment? Yeah, SAD just supported um, Delamitri yeah. and supported Edwin Starr in uh, Portsmouth on Friday. Yeah. And they're doing really well, playing a lot of new original material today. Great. Well, we'll be long later to go with that. How long does it go on for today? It's going to finish just after 11. Yeah. And hopefully we won't keep uh, too many people awake at Andover. <laughs> So how many tickets you sold? How many are you looking to sell? I don't know. I think I think we're hit sort of about three and a half thousand people. Oh, that's fantastic. It's a good fun day out for the children as well, isn't it? It's not just a not just a beer festival, is it? No, it's a it's a family day and that's why children are free. Yeah. Hopefully uh, they're gonna enjoy it. And you're raising money for charity and for the rugby club? Yeah, there'll be some local charities that benefit out of this. Um, and we raise money for towards the rugby club to keep rugby flourishing in Andover. Okay, well that's smashing. So all you Salisbury viewers out there, what a great day you're missing. You should be in Andover. At the end of a rugby club, Lawrence organised it. It's going to be a great day. So we'll see you later. Okay, bye for now. Well, I told you I'd bring you a really good um, event uh, this August bank holiday, besides being at the uh, rugby club at the beer festival, we're here in Appleshaw. And uh, this is a grand Appleshaw fete. What a wonderful day. The sun's shining. We're in a wonderful uh, vintage to deal, 1914 vintage. And uh, horns are blowing. And uh, please move out of the way else we'll run you over, but... <laughs> This is really, really good fun. Must be a record crowd at the fair today, Simon. It must be. It's a lot of people. They're queuing up for hours, I think. There's more people than at the, at the beer festival. It's incredible. It's a flower festival as well. Point over that way, Jason. Look at it. Hundreds of people. Bottle stalls. We're just doing a little uh, left-hand circuit of... Uh, of the Appleshaw cricket pitch where the uh, fate's going on. Perfect bit of driving by uh, Seymour. Well, thanks very much to the walnut tree at uh, Appleshaw for driving us down in style to the fate. What do you think of that, Jason? Was that good or was that good? That was brilliant. It's the first time I've been in a vintage car. Absolutely excellent. So, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to walk around and uh, have a look at the fate. So, just follow me this way. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? My name's Jackie. Jackie, what are you doing? with your face black and white? That is a very good question and I don't really know because I'm a bit positive and negative. I suppose we are today. What are you doing? That's face painting. Absolutely, yes. Really? Can we interest you then? Uh, no thanks, no. Oh, no do, you, not, do you do this for a living? No sir, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and your friend, what's her name over there? Her name's um, the Wicked Witch, uh, the Wicked also known Witch. as Wendy. Oh right. Yes. Where do you live? Uh, Wildhen. Wildhen. Look at Jason. Look into that lens and say hello to all your friends in Wildhern. Hello to all my friends in Wildhern. If they recognise you. I very much doubt it. <laughs> Thank you. OK, thanks for talking to us. See you later. Bye. Bye. Where are you from? King George Road. What's your name? Hayley. Hayley, what's your name? Kerry. Kerry, and your name? Louise. Where are you from, Louise? King George Road. You're all from King George Road? Yeah. Look into that lens, big wave, say hello, Town TV. Hello, Town <laughs> TV. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Well, wasn't that nice, Jace? Here we go. We got Jason on camera today, because Steve's away. He's doing some sort of thing with Fairport Convention. No, is it Fairport? I don't know. Anyway, he's up to some. He's being a hippie. He's going back to being a hippie. So here we are. We're doing our bit. So we never stop working on Town TV. We're always working. Well, not, not only is Appleshaw having a fate, it's having a flower show as well. And Tony Murray, if you're watching this, um, it's not a giant pumpkin, it's a giant marrow competition over here. Look, come and look at these things over here. Look at this. This is a wonderful marrow. 
Hello. Hello. <laughs> what are you up to? <laughs> what are these things here? They're carrots. They're, they're not. They're not carrots. <laughs> they're foxgloves. Well, yes, they're foxgloves, and these are marrows. These are marrows. Are, they're all marrows. They're all marrows. Yes, they are. Yeah. There's some huge marrows there, isn't there? There are some big ones there, but there are. Those are a special oh, kind that are extra sweet. Pardon? Each. So are these grown locally? Sorry, what's your name anyway? It's a bit rude of me. What's your name? Harold Morrell. Harold? <laughs> Hello. Where are you from? Appleshaw? No, I'm from Redenham. You're from Redenham? Yes. yes. <laughs> so where do all these come from? Did you bring these yourself? No, no, no. They're given by various people in the village. Yeah, they're given. No, we've had a lot of stuff. You've come too late. You should have, you should have come around early when we had a, had a stat. It's good. Stuff. It's so successful. There's thousands of people here, isn't there? It's a good, good, it's a good show. Yeah. One of the best village fates I've seen this year anyway. Very good. Yes, we've had a good attendance and good weather. We've had good weather for several years now. That's smashing. A good run. Yeah, we've what, and you've got a new hall open as well? Yeah, There's, it's all gone off with a grand. Been a great job. Yeah. All right, Harold, thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. One thing about being on Time TV, you're always getting stopped by people saying, can they be on telly? And what's your name? Kerry. Okay, and where are you from, Kerry? Lugshaw. Whereabouts in Lugshaw? Linen Close. All oh, right. Look into that lens there. Look into that lens and say hello to all your friends in Lugshaw. Hello to my hello to my friends in Lugshaw. Thank you very much. Thanks Where a lot. You hey, you're enjoying yourself, having a good time at the fate? Yeah. You keep watching next Friday evening. All right. Keep watching in Lugshaw. Okay? okay. Bye bye. This way, Jason. Hello, ladies. You having a good time? Very good time. Thank you. Yes, we always do. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Mrs. Perkins. Mrs. Perkins. Where are you from? Um, Appleshaw. Are you? Mm, yes, I'm one of the oldest inhabitants. Oh, you're looking wonderful today. It's a, what, a, what a wonderful day, isn't it? Isn't it great? The sun's shining. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. That's my granddaughter there. Where's that? Uh, here? What's your name? Patricia. And where are you from? Well, I live in Odium now. Do you? Yep. Appleshaw's great, isn't it? Oh yes, always come back for the fate. You've got a lovely pub down the road called the Walnut Tree, that's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your name? I'm Mrs. Reid from Odium as well. You're from Odium as well. And my mother there, Mrs. Craddock. Hello Mrs. Craddock, are you enjoying yourself? Yes, fine. Jolly good, jolly good. Well enjoy yourself at the fate. Thank you for talking to us. Bye bye. And this... Peggy, Peggy, if you put they're asking for a bunch of carrots. What are you selling here? You're selling everything? We're selling everything, yes. Are you? Yes. What's your name? Phil Potts. Where are you from? Appleshaw. You're from Appleshaw as well. That's great, isn't it? Well, that's good. Great fake. Congratulations. Oh, good. Good. It is every year. It is. I've just been told that. And you always get the good weather, is that right? That's right. It never rains actually on the day. Does it? No. Absolutely fantastic. Well, that's great. There we are. What a wonderful fake, Jason. Step this way. Thank you for talking to us. Bye bye. And here's a burger store. I mean, where would you be without a burger for one pound twenty and a hot dog for a pound? I think we're taking a bit of this music in. <laughs> you're on it <laughs> if you're going to take my money you've got to be on the film no no I hate being on film no it's alright how much is it 30p and you give me 5 Go on. I'll give you 10p change Hold thank on. you very much we've got a very shy person here Jason so I'm just going to have a go at the bowling instead thanks very much no, you can go bowling. I'm going to go bowling two oh. 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 Oh.
That's you too. Okay. Let's give the microphone back. There you go. Well, there you are, Jason. I got one. How about that? That wasn't terribly good, but at least I'm entering the spirit of things. It's all for a good cause. Let's go down here. Enjoying our, our live show from Appershaw Village Fete and the uh, Rock and Roll Festival up at uh, the Rugby Club. Uh, we've been shooting Lane's Farm for a couple of weeks, a project workshop. So we're going to go, you go right back there right now and actually show you some pottery. So um, it's over to you, Bill. Joe, Joe Berryman. Um, yes. We're talking to each other as though we're on camera. We're not. Steve's coming to us now and he's now looking to us. Joe Berryman, you've been here how long? Just over a year, just about a year. And you make pottery ornaments? Mostly earthenware pottery. No, not ornaments so much as um, every, you know, pots you use every day. Right. And a lot of oil burners, which are very popular. This is for what, scenting the air? Yes, um, I've been making a lot of these. These are actually for Sent, sent out to shops. I do them in large quantities. They're not the usual type of burner, but... Um, do you fire the these here? The yes, it's all fired here. Put the candle at the bottom, and oil and water in the top, and it's like a vaporizer. Super. Mm. Certainly beats a thing. Oh yes, much better. And it goes <laughs> on longer, long as you remember eventually to blow really? the candle out. Yes, and, yes, yes. And also for aromatherapy, you know, people mm. use these, so... Uh, I'm particularly fascinated by your pieces which involve little pumps and fountains and things which uh, appeal <laughs> to the mechanical side of my nature. Can well, you show us one of those? Yes, I'll um, just put this back. We're going to do a complicated crossover in camera here. Excuse no, us. Excuse us. Very well executed. Thank you. Unfortunately, well, this will sit on a bowl. This will be terracotta colour eventually when it's fired. At the moment it's wet. It's still drying. And... Uh, Underneath is a bowl with a pump, little tiny pump in it, and the water comes up through here and into there and back down again through the holes. It's just circulated Trom all the time. Trompe in the fact that we think it's going on forever, but it's not. It's just pumped around. I know. I get these sort of uh, comments. Oh, why can't you fill it with red wine and then it'll be constantly flowing? You see, with it, <laughs> that's come up a few times. That's one, and there's another one there. They'll be, they're not, um, they're usually not glazed, but the, the leaves I sometimes glaze. These are actually taken from real leaves outside. So the leaves will be coloured, but the background will yes. be just in terracotta? Yes. I, I think it's a lovely idea because the tinkling of the water in the background is so nice in a house anyway. Well, it disturbs some people. <laughs> Had to keep getting up. Yes, that's <laughs> right, yes, something like that. <laughs> there are various uh, variations on that. 
but they've been very popular this year because probably because it's been so hot. Now your racks are quite empty at the moment because you've just finished three days down at Broadlands. Partly that. Partly that I've just packed two kilns. One's going to be fired tonight. The big blue one. There's a big blue one over there. <laughs> big blue kiln. They're both um, electric kilns. And then there's a round one over there, which I'm just packing with a what's called a bisque firing, first firing. And um, the one, two more things will go in there tomorrow. The bisque is just about a slip. No, on it, it's on a it. first firing. I've fired about 920 centigrade. And then the pots are glazed. I'll show you a glazed pot. Can okay. I go over there? Yes, we're walking. We're not on camera. Ah, we are now. Now this, this white is a glaze. That it's, is a glaze. Yes, but it's not a, a not a lustrous glaze, is it? And no, it's got. It's waiting to be fired a second time. It's been oh, fired right. once. It it's a, feels like a plant pot at the moment. Underneath, mm -hmm. it's sort of rough. And you put the glaze on as a liquid. It's it's wet. It's and. The pot is so porous, it immediately dries like, like this, like a powder. And it's fired a second time. This will be fired to about 1100 centigrade. And that takes the shine. What actually is the material used in the glaze on the pot? Um, it's got quite a lot of borax in it and um, whiting and flint and that sort of thing. It's like, it's like putting a layer of glass over it, really. And uh, I'll show you inside the kiln, if you like. similar but they all come out different colours. Now these are oil burners again. Those are oil burners. Yes. There's some big jugs at the back. And there's some huge there's dishes some, down at the bottom there. dishes, yes. They're um, oven proof dishes. How long will this fire for? Um, well, I'll turn it on, it'll go on tonight and it'll finish tomorrow morning and then it takes a couple of days really to cool down. These appear to be being fired flat on the actual surface. I always thought in pottery or there were little <laughs> pins underneath um yes they you you do in with china and that sort of thing i couldn't do it with that it would probably warp it's very flat actually and uh, i don't glaze them underneath you see something else i didn't know steve again some of them i mean they're, they're glazed underneath but um they've got a foot which is i hope this wasn't the foot is uh, the foot ring is unglazed and the rest of it is glazed I love your little mouse and your cheese cover there. That's a, that's a special order for somebody, so... It's just waiting. Stephen, macro shot for a mouse look. OK, one of the things, of course, which we forgot to mention is how you actually make these pieces. They're actually thrown on the wheel. Most of them are thrown on the wheel, yes. And when, when you call it throwing, is this because the initial act of depositing yes, the it's clay just is a throw? Yes, it's just actually throwing it onto the wheel and that's head. Why that's why it's called throwing, yes. And the actual lift is called what? Um, that's pulling it up or drawing it up. Sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have you to tell have you to turn the bottoms off to <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. I have to tell you that Joe came to dinner at the Shears last week, so obviously we get on quite well. <laughs> <laughs> very nice dinner actually. Thank you. It's all the right things. Thank you very much for right. nice Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Dear. Bye bye. Well with the sounds of the majorettes ringing in our ears, I'd just like to um, bid you a farewell from uh, August Bank Holiday in Appleshaw. It's been a great day. I've never really seen anything like the Majorettes before. It's been quite amazing, but um, we had a great time. And now what we're going to do is take you back to the Andover Rugby Club and the Blues Festival there, which is going on. Should be a great day out. So um, thanks all you people from Appleshaw for being such good sports. So we'll see you later. OK, bye for now. Well, well welcome. Uh, Welcome back to Under Rugby Club, and as we've uh, come back now, it's about five o'clock to see what's going on here this afternoon. It's all happening, and just about to jump out of this plane right above your head are some parachuters, and, and here they go, is the first one. Number two, number three. There's three I can see coming down now. Three parachutes, just about to one. Four, five, six. Three red ones. And uh, hopefully they're going to be landing just over here to your right-hand side. Hopefully they can get between the rugby posts and the crowd on there. There's a little orange cross on the ground there. Welcome back to the Andover Blues and Rock Festival, the beer festival. It's really, really good. We've been covering things all day long. And here they come. And if you cast your eye up there, 
you'll see uh, just up above me, Jason, you'll see in come the skydivers. What a lovely day for skydiving. Bit of wind blowing. Well, I hope nobody actually does themselves an injury on these rugby posts because they look quite lethal. But here they come. Big crowd here this afternoon. There's three red ones all in formation. He's coming in just right. Great lining. Well done. And he's picked up a card. <laughs> Here comes the blue and the uh, yellow one coming in. This is going to be a perfect lining right on the orange marker. No, why well not? Just, just the left-hand side, but it's pretty good going. There's a green and yellow one coming in. Well, he's going a little bit to the right-hand side, but um, I think he's going to stop. And no, he's just going in the corner. Here come the red ones. Look at this perfect formation flying coming in from from the right-hand side. Incredible stuff. Well, thanks to the uh, skydivers. What we're going to do now, folks, is go and look at the stage and see what's happening on the rock and roll stage. So, follow me. Right, I'm just going to have a little quick word with the uh, skydivers, so uh, come with me. Hello. How was that for you? Oh, magic, magic, absolutely magic. Uh, what was it like jumping today? Okay. Oh, beautiful. You could, see, you could see, almost see the coast from up there. Really? From three and a half thousand oh, feet. Where, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Reading. Yeah? Where are you from? Uh, Charlton. Ch where? Charlton. Charlton in Andover? There it is. You're not? I am. Look into that lens then. Oh, <laughs> Say um, hello to all your friends in Charlton. I wonder if I'm, am I wanted by anybody? No, I'm alright. No, yeah, no, yeah, okay. What's your name? Ken, Ken Townsend. Ken. What was it like jumping today, Ken? Uh, it was good fun. Was it? Good fun. A lot of hassling around up in the aircar, going around in circles. That Why we was that? Right. We didn't get clearance from the ground. Oh, right. Uh, I don't think enough people put their tickets out. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, uh, to be fair to the people, they need to put their tickets out for the prize. Okay. How high were you jumping from today? Uh, 4,000 feet. Really? Which is... Um, 15 second delay in free fall, and then two minute canopy ride. Absolutely fantastic, look brilliant, well done. Thank you. Thanks a lot, cheers, bye bye. <laughs> How are you doing, Will? <laughs> desperate. <laughs> it's desperate, he's trying to get the loo, but we're not gonna allow him, because I just wanna say hello to all the old fans out there. Mm. Oh, well, hello. How have you been doing? You've been um, playing with Delimitri and all that sort of stuff? We have, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, we've been doing a lot of that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and it's all, all going better than expected, to say the least. Um, yeah. It's a year, really, since you played here last, it's amazing. One year yeah, ago, yeah, you, I, one year ago they played it. One uh, year ago, one yeah. year ago, um, we, we we did, yeah. Um, and you're almost. Are you top of the bill tonight? Uh, no, we're not. Stone Cold. You are, I, I've been gagging to see for for a year. Yeah. Well, for about six months now, yeah. and um, so it's quite nice that uh, we can get our bit over and done with and yeah. uh, relax a bit and and, and see them. Um, what, what's happening next? Are you writing new stuff or what? We're we're um, he heading off into the studio the, the last week of September and. Um, uh, we've got some new stuff that we're going to uh, play for the first time tonight. Um, Brilliant. Well, first time in front of an audience. We've obviously played it before. Yeah, right. Uh, as a band. But so. you've been working and working and working this year. No wonder you want to get the whole loop. <laughs> well, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been, it's been yeah. a long slog. Um, yeah. our, our manager, Lawrence, has, has kept us um, uh, busy, to say the least. Um, it's been a, a hard year. Um, we've had a few downs as well as the ups, but I mean, the ups have well and truly compensated for the downs. Um, okay, uh, great. Delamitri, um, you know, Battle of the Bands, winning it was just excellent. Yeah. And, um, and this today is, um, I don't know, I'm a bit worried about the weather, but it, it's holding good. And, uh, Absolutely few, brilliant. A few beers and what more can one ask for? <laughs> well, here we are. It's, uh, it's now getting on for quarter to seven. Old, old commenter on stage. Belting out their usual mix of uh, R&B, blues, and whatever they do. Great lineup. Pumping it out. Maximum volume. Great mix of people here this afternoon, though. It's not, not just all the rockers. There's children. They're having a fun time. Everybody's enjoying themselves in the sunshine.
one more of the best from the uh, and the Baroque Festival. That was old comment, John Martyr on drums. What a band. Great, great band. We're going to try and have a quick word with John Martyr. He's probably knackered, but um, he's probably really tired out, I suppose I should say. But um, we're just going to have a little quick word down here. And, and here we go. And, and, and we're just coming around for a little, little, we're in the finishing straight. And it's a John Martyr. What are you Hello, doing? Baby. How are you doing? I'm all right, my boy. That's a great set. Well done. Oh, hot one. Are you tired? <laughs> <laughs> Ask me what a sport. I saw a great set from you on the TV the other day. What were you doing up at that? Uh, was it VH1. Yeah. VH1. Excellent set. Yeah, a Spike, a Spike's SAS band. It's the SAS band. Spikey's all star band. A Spike from Queen, a keyboard player from Queen, you know? Right, yeah. We've got Jamie Moses on guitar. Yeah. We've got uh, Stevie Stroud from Cliff Ridge on the bass. And you on drums? Me on drums, for goodness sake. Bless his heart. Cozy Powell sort of like uh, <laughs> went off with Black Sabbath, so left me the space. Bless his heart. I love him. <laughs> And yeah, we just we just kind of like uh, hosting gigs up and down the country, doing a lot of stuff at the bottom line coming up shortly. Um, we're like everybody on the bill. We've got just everybody like Kiki D roll up and do a couple. We've got Tony Hadley from Spandau Ballet. Yeah, I saw that. But you seem to be able to play with anybody, and yeah. they all love you. Fish what, what from Marillion. We've got um, oh god, there's like there's hundreds on everybody. You think of Paul Rogers from Freeze, another goodie we've got. Uh, and great. so it goes on, and Roger Taylor comes and does stuff with us as well. Great stuff, really, a lot of good stuff. But a good set tonight from Old Comment. Yeah, this, this afternoon, wasn't it? Was it still this evening? Is it the, no, it's 7 o'clock. We've made it into the evening, all oh, right. Yeah, we had a pretty hot one. Yeah, it's good sound, and you know, great, great stage and great get up by all the guys and stuff from the crew. Really good stuff. Well, I got hot watching this, I'm going to go and have a beer, so I expect you're going to have one too. Good, <laughs> dead right, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Cheers, John. Yeah, oh, Pepsi, thanks for talking to us. Cheers. Tortoise has just been fed and it looks like having a Caesar salad to me. It looks pretty good. I wouldn't mind getting a bit of uh, vinaigrette on some of that. It looks really tasty. And that's what they eat, is it, Giles? Salad. Yeah, various salad and vegetables. Yeah. And there are eight of them in here together. We've also got two babies in there, hatched in September 93. Mm -hmm. Well, he looks very hungry, that one. I think these two are having a race down here. It's obviously a tortoise race. And there's Damon Hill in the front there, and he's... <laughs> Damon's just overtaken uh, Schumacher, who's languishing in the pits. And right down the end there is, um, looks like a Japanese driver, he's, he's way last. <laughs> Charles, where, where did you get these, uh, these, these from? They arrived from the Hawk Conservancy at Way Hill. Yeah. They donated them to us earlier this year. Yeah. Uh, so we're running short of space, I think. So what's the official name for the, the Highland Cattle, Highland obviously? Cattle. Yeah. yeah. Obviously they come from Scotland. Yeah. Uh, very hardy animals. Yeah. Uh, particularly good for outwintering, keeping out during the winter. So We're staring, conditions. staring in all weathers and yeah. don't, in those coats. <laughs> Mind you, they probably don't like the hot weather too hot, do they, I suppose? No, they have uh, molted quite a bit, though. Yeah. They've lost quite a bit of hair yeah. over the summer. Give us a nice smile, thank you very much. That's Mac and Donald, those two. Mac and Donald? Yeah. Very good, very good. Very good. It's worth putting out the car park, Steve, over there, just to your left a bit. See, when we arrived at uh, 10 o'clock, about six cars there. Now we've got coaches and we've got more cars coming in. It's obviously a very popular destination. Well done, Charles, I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> Well, we've come inside now, so in addition to all the animals, you've got a wonderful gift shop here at uh, Finkley, Finkley Down Farm. And you can buy a great video made by a good friend of ours, John Cocking. Only 9 95 souvenir video programme of uh, Finkley Down. And you can buy honey, you can buy sticks of rock, you can buy fluffy toys, Steve. Uh, they are a little, that's sweet, isn't it? 
can buy all these sort of things here. Some great Christmas presents and um, some great souvenirs of your day at Finkley Down Farm Park. It's truly great. Right, Charles, so what, what, what's this? This is another massive area of Finkley Down Farm. Yeah, we've got Giggle here with a Giggle. Uh, foal chatter. <laughs> hello, chatter. Come and say hello to Hello, you. chatter. How are you? Aren't you lovely? Oh, you're lovely. Beautiful. Like Doesn't like me. <laughs> yes, she does. And this is Giggle. Giggle and chatter. Hello, Giggle. Hello. Say hello to the camera, look. Woof. Can't eat it. It's not an ice cream. They're lovely. So much to see. Now, as you said, take a day to see it. <laughs> really. So what does it cost to get in, Charles? Uh, £3.40 for an adult, yep. £2.30 a child. Uh, you don't pay for under threes. Mm. And a family ticket, two adults and two children is £11. And for that, you can stay here all day, bring your own right. picnic. That's right. I think it's amazing value for many viewers. Get yourself down to Finkley Farm before it's too late. But we hope it's not going to be too late. But uh, it's, a thing like this deserves protecting and keeping for years and years and years, doesn't it? Yeah, we're fighting to stay open, and I'm sure we'll win, actually, eventually. I'm sure you win. This is just too good to uh, do without. So, uh, thanks for watching the show. We'll see you later, back at the studio. Thanks. I'm heading down to Mind, opposite the police station, and i got to find Mike Smith, and he's got to show me around what's, what happens here in Mind. It looks bigger than I thought. Oh, let's go and see if we can get Mike. Mike, how are you? Hi, nice to see you again. Mike, what do you do here? My official title is Development Officer, but since the centre opened, I've been more involved in managing the business and making the place financially successful. So, how, how is business, as they say? Business is very good. The centre has uh, running at about 250% over our original estimate in terms of the number of people attending the centre on a daily basis and we've expanded the staff from three people originally to uh, five full-time members now. How long have you been open? We've been open officially since uh, January the 23rd and during that time we've had nearly 8,000 people through the doors. Not 8,000 different people I hasten to add but 8,000 people and uh, we are open 50 hours a week. You've got uh, your staff here but you also have volunteers don't you? We have a large number of volunteers in fact uh, the Volunteers provide about uh, 5,000 hours a year and they assist us in virtually every part of the building. That's the charity shop, the workshop and also the main social centre upstairs. Right, your clients that come here, do they come, they want to come in voluntarily or do they, are they referred to you or what? Clients are referred to us uh, via various, various agencies but they do come totally voluntarily and they are free to do what they will when they come to the centre. They can sit and talk. Uh, they can enjoy a cup of tea or a hot meal. They can work in the workshop, the charity shop, or the office. Uh, we have craft groups and art groups running, and we also run outside events. What do you do on the outside events? Uh, they go to various uh, places. Um, they've recently been down to see the tall ships race return at Portsmouth. Um, we've had barbecues at the bungalow, which is a centre uh, on the outskirts of Andover. Um, I think you best speak to Pat Cricket, Trickett, who's the centre manageress, who will tell you more about the social side than I can. We'll speak to Pat later. Yes. So you, you actually got this building about, about a year ago, wasn't it? Yes, you? we actually occupied the building in September uh, 94. It was in a dilapidated state. So we converted the building ourselves using volunteer labour and also with help from the Grand Met Trust organisation and the Community Action Plan. And a lot of local help from companies in Andover, uh, providing both uh, material and labour. Yeah, how are you funded? We're basically funded by the uh, Health Commission and the Social Services. They provide the bulk of our funds, um, Test Valley Borough Council, and also we raise funds ourselves via our charity shop, and also we uh, apply for funds to people like the National Lotteries and the European Social Fund. How have you got on with the lotteries so far? Uh, well, we, I think we're one of uh, 50,000 applications, so watch this space. There could be some time before you see a result. You're going to have to win first to yes. get it. <laughs> Right, I'm going in to see Anne Casson. I think she is Anne in the shop. Where's Anne? Anne, how are you? Hello there, pleased to see you. Love to see you. Haven't seen you for a while. No, that's right. Are you busy in here? Very busy. It's doing very well. That's excellent. There's so much stuff in this shop. You don't buy any of this stuff in. 
No, everything we have in the shop is donated. As a registered charity, we can't buy anything. Oh, I see. So you either make it yourselves or you yes. donated it. Yes, that's right. And what's your function here? I'm a coordinator. Um, I'm in charge of all volunteers and also transport. How many volunteers have you got now? We've got 70 odd altogether, and in one week there's over 40 volunteers in, in the centre, but we also have a lot of car drivers and minibus drivers, furniture van drivers. Oh, that's excellent. So, all the bits and pieces of furniture we see in here, volunteers bring it in? Yes, in the furniture van. We have our own furniture van which goes out, and we also deliver. You deliver as well? Yes, very cheaply. We're open uh, seven days a week and two evenings, Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. So people can eat here on Sundays? Oh yes, we do a full roast dinner on a Sunday. Oh, do you? Um, <laughs> thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Can I just make a quick appeal for Please volunteers? Yes. I need several volunteers because we're actually open 51 hours a week and we use so many in different posts. I need um, staff for uh, driving, car and minibus. All expenses are met for any volunteer. I need staff for the charity shop, cooking meals, snacks, in activities, just having conversation with people, arts and craft skills, um, admin. There's several different positions, so please, we really need you. And it's a wonderful, friendly environment here. It's wonderful. And can you give us the telephone number here? Yes, it's Andover 332297. So please pop in and see me any time. I'll always be pleased to see you. Full training is given to volunteers and expenses are met. So you're never out of pocket. Thanks, Anne. Thanks very much. There's so much behind here. There's so many things going on. It will take us two weeks, so we're going to show you next week some of the rest of this building. See you next week. Bye. Well, it's now ten past eight at the, uh, at the festival. And we've got a band called the Mighty 45s on stage. It's been a great day. It's getting dust behind me. There's still thousands of people here really enjoying themselves. And uh, so what I'm going to say to you is just continue watching music. 45s, really great band, great vocalists, great keyboards, great band. So, watch the band.
Right, we're in Salisbury again. Dairy Meadow Lane, to be precise. We've got Tesco's on one side, and we got somewhere that was called Sweb, but now it's called Norweb, and we want to f find out why. Let's go inside and see. Hello, Kate. How are you, How are you doing? To Thanks very much indeed. Kate Feather. Kate, what, what's your position in the company? Uh, I'm the Advertising and Promotions Manager for Norweb Retail. And where do you reside? Where's your office? Uh, we're based in Bolton. That's where the headquarters is for the retail part of the business. Mm -hmm. So I've come all the way down to Salisbury this morning. That's well, a long journey, isn't it? It is. Do you uh, have to travel around a lot? Well, I'm mainly office-based, but I do get around our stores. And recently, uh, since we took over the Sweb area, uh, I have to travel as far as Camborne and Bristol and down to Torquay. So we've got some quite scenic spots now. <laughs> I mentioned outside that there's a change of name. It used to be Sweb here. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, Norweb uh, acquired most of the Sweb um, superstars, well, all of the superstars, and some of the high street shops uh, in April. The deal was announced. We actually took over and started trading as Norweb at the beginning of June. So I've just been here 10 weeks or so now. 10 weeks? How many stores have you got? We've got 18 superstars and 16 high street shops. Well, that's a lot, isn't it, in a short time? Well, that's just in the Sweb area. Oh, really? Yeah, so. altogether. Um, I think we've got so, just over 90 high street shops yeah. down here and up in the northwest where we're based. And we've got 64 out of town stores, and that's grown from nothing in three years. That's incredible. It really is a success story. We love these on Town TV. <laughs> so you came all the way down from Bolton. Is that where most of your stores are, up around the north? Um, most of our high street shops are in the northwest. That's our traditional area. Um, we have about 80 high street shops there. Um, but about three years ago, we started expanding with out of town stores, yeah. with, which is uh, where most shoppers buy their electrical goods now on out of town sites. And we expanded over into Yorkshire and down to the Midlands. And recently, we've gone down as far as Stevenage mm. and Northampton on one side of the country. And since we acquired Sweb in April, um, that's filled in the southwest side of the country because before our furthest south store was in Gloucester. Uh, we're obviously a company that's growing. Um, we're planning up to 20 new superstars every year, so the staff are, are very excited and they can see it's a company with a future. And of course, we took on all the Sweb staff um, that worked in the shops and stores that we acquired. Mm. So they're pleased not to have lost their jobs as well. I oh, think before fantastic. that, their future was a bit uncertain. Yeah, but that's excellent. So they're still employed. Right? Yeah, that's well, right. Thanks for that, Kate. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Thanks very much. Bye -bye. Okay, Turner, can I introduce you to Charlie Turford, who's a key member of the management team down here in Salisbury, and he'll tell you a bit more about the store and our products. How are you, Charlie? Tony, please nice to you. see you. So how long have you been here? Uh, in Salisbury alone, I've been here just over three years now. You enjoy it? Yes, brilliant. It's a nice town, isn't it? City, rather. Well, it's, it's a large town with a cathedral, I'd like <laughs> yes. to put it, yeah. But yes, it is a city in its own right. Have you been very busy all the time you've been here? Uh, most of the time, yes. Um, don't get much chance for breaks, but hard work, plenty of rewards for it. How many staff have you got here? We've got um, another member on the management team and uh, 11 other staff. Well, that's quite a few, isn't it, for a store? Well, you need it at certain times. Yeah. Lots what of what sells best here? You've got so much stuff in the store. I mean, I don't know where to start, but what, what is the best sellers that you've got? Well, it depends on the, on the person or, or, or what they're shopping for in particular. The, the uh, white goods are leading at the moment, but uh, since Norway's took over, we've got that many decent um, brown good products in now, like all our, the new uh, Dolby Pro Logic range and both hi fis and TVs. And they're starting to sell really All well. All state-of-the-art stuff. Oh, it is, yes. It's lost me because I still got my windy-up gramophone. But... <laughs> With the old 78s. Yeah. That's it. Well, yeah. well, these products are very good, up-to-date, state-of-the-art things. And um, we're getting a grips of them now. And people are actually coming in and, and buying uh, these kind of products. Yeah, but you've got a, a one hell of a range here. That's just looking around the store earlier today. But has it always been this, this range here? No, the range is on brown goods particularly has certainly increased since... Uh, Norweb took over us. What's the difference between brown goods and white goods? Brown goods, well, if you, if you consider it, uh, white goods are things that are mainly white, like washing machines, cookers, yeah. uh, dishwashers, tumble dryers, things like that. Brown goods, although the main colour I would say is black, yeah. are your hi-fis, your televisions, um, even your portable uh, telephones, they, they all come under the brown goods range. Awesome. Can we go and have a look at some of these? Certainly. Oh, this is rather a large TV, isn't it? This is um, 
uh, the Toshiba Dolby Pro Logic it actually um, is a, a very good quality Dolby Pro Logic television. This is very, very compact, isn't it? This is the new um, uh, Ken Kenwood Pro Logic Hi-Fi system. That uh, it's their baby one, that I like to call it. It's a middle of the range price system. It's got a very high quality sound system on it, and it is Pro Logic. Mm -hmm. And if people understand Pro Logic, which means basically all around sound, if something happens at the rear, you hear it at the rear. Yeah. If it happens on the right, you hear it on the right. And it, it's quite frightening when you first hear it until you get used to it. It's very, very good quality sound. It's always offers with Norweb, I've found since they, they took over. At the moment, we've got um, up to 18 months interest free, and buy now, pay 12 months later which a lot of people go for in Salisbury. Well, this is excellent, isn't it? It is. It saves them money and it also brings in the custom for us. Yeah. It's very good. Well, Charlie, thanks very much for talking to us today. You're welcome. And I'll be down to have a look at that. And I'll get the wife to have a look at it as well. You're welcome. Thanks. You're welcome. So, Tony, it's been right around the Norwest store. What do you think? I think it's excellent. Everything here you could possibly want. Yeah, so it can rely on you to be a customer. <laughs> most definitely, most good. definitely. I'll Glad to hear here. it. <laughs> What's, uh, what is the store called? Is it an electrical goods store? Or what? Um, an electrical retailer. Electrical okay. retailer. Yeah. And what's the difference between Norweb and... Boxster? And everybody else out and there. everybody else, yes. Uh, well, first and foremost, price is most important for most customers. And we'll always match any price. Uh, in fact, we say our prices are the lowest and we guarantee that. But on top of that, what a lot of people can't offer is the quality and service yeah. that we have at Norway, both the quality of the goods and the quality and advice that the staff can offer. A lot of them have worked uh, for Norweb and for Sweb before that for quite a long time, so they've got a lot of experience. Um, we've even got, as you can see here, we're standing in front of our own repair centre. So if, uh, it's not just a repair centre, it's for technical assistance as well. So if, if somebody wants to know the ins and outs of how, how a hi-fi or a television works, um, the guy that stands behind this desk will sort that out for them and give them technical advice and assistance. So you could tell me how to get work my video. Yeah, that's right. Or if you took your video home with you then found you couldn't tune it in, yeah. bring it back in here, he'll go through the instruction book with you, show you how to do it. and. Uh, whether you bought the product from here or anywhere else, you can bring it in here. Well, even and if you bought it somewhere we'll else, we'll give you it. assistance with repair, yeah. repairs and assistance. Yeah. Well, that's a great service, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Well, thanks to Kate, thanks to Charlie yeah. up there. I've enjoyed your visit. Thanks very much indeed. Good. And we'll see you again soon. Yeah, and look forward to serving the people of Salisbury. Wonderful. Okay. Bye bye then. Bye. Don't you think our garden looks wonderful, Tan? It's wonderful. It's all this with great summer, though, isn't it? It's well, it's not finished yet. No, it's not finished yet. No, but it's getting close to I mean, the last bank holiday, you always think, oh, that's the end of summer. But the weather's still great. Yeah, thanks to Legoshaw Garden Centre for uh, all this. They're good lads out there. Go and see them. They'll sell you the odd pansy or two. Talking about pansies, what are you doing with that on your head? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I feel like a right pillow. Somebody gave it to me, so I, I had to wear it. I think it looks really nice. And how's your pumpkin doing? It stopped growing. It got to about this size, and no matter what I do, I talk to it every night. Nothing. Stop growing. You're not going to win the competition, then? Well, I'm going to cheat a bit now. I'm going to try and do, put some chemicals into it. See Ken that. Dykes from The Advertiser. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? He's going to cheat. Anyway, let me tell you something about this summer. It's the end of the summer. Isn't that sad? Mm. A big uh, oh, half a town TV. Do you know this summer was the driest of this century. The driest summer of this century. This isn't the quiz, by the way. Although, what do you think was hotter, 1976 or 1995? What do you think? Can you remember that far back? I wasn't in this country much then. You jet setter. Yeah, I, was in, I was away in um, Australia during the summer. Of yeah. 76? Yes, yeah, so I was. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, 76 was hotter. And um, this summer was only the third hottest. How about that? Good Lord. Third hottest. But this August broke all records. This August was the hottest ever since records began way back in the 16th century. So when Steve got a little sunburnt head when he was out filming this August, you know why. <laughs> Bless him. You can borrow this. Bless him. Please. Bless him. <laughs> there we are. Right. There you go, just in case. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um... That was Steve messing around with his hat. Protecting the camera, Protecting the camera lens, <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Anyway, if you've got any great, great holiday shots or holiday videos, 
or anything you took on holiday which is really, really embarrassing, you know, like Ally Jeremy Beadle and all that sort of stuff. Somebody wearing a hat like this. Somebody wearing a hat like this, yes, really embarrassing. Send them in, but ring us on and over 390, 390. Send in your video or your holiday snaps if you've got anything particular. You want to show the whole of the cable area between Salisbury, Andover, Romsey and all those other points. If you want to see yourself on Town TV, send us your video and we'll send you a tenner. How about that? That's an offer, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. I got a few of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, tenors, videos. Yes, <laughs> send, yeah, send us your video and uh, we'll send you a tenner. That's, uh, ring us on Andover 390 390. We'll tell you how to get your videos to us. So um, anyway, it's competition time. It's competition. Enough of all this rabbiting on. <sighs> David Letterman, don't even come into it, does he Who really? He? Who's David Letterman? That's not, that's not the competition. <laughs> right, Mr. Ali, down at the Eastern Eye, because it was so hot, we thought, well, we'd have a, a curry <laughs> down at the Eastern Eye. And, and Mr. Always, Ali, always good on timing, down yeah. TV, yes. Yeah. And Mr. Ali said, look, send your viewers down for the competition, down to the Eastern Eye, I will give them the most wonderful meal for two with a a free bottle, bottle of wine, of wine yes. as well. Free bottle of wine as well. So this is a competition for a fantastic meal in the Eastern Night in Andover. Or you Salisbury Bridge, you've got to get to Andover, but... Uh, well, it's our favourite Indian restaurant. Yeah, it's really good. Mr. Ali, well done for that. First question, what was the name of the film that Sir Richard Attenborough produced about the legendary Indian leader? And that's one word. What was the name of the film that Sir Richard Attenborough produced about the legendary Indian leader? That's question one. Question two... Can you read that? The glasses, the glasses. What's the capital? What the capital of India. What's the capital of India? There we are. I got this one wrong when, when he made up this question, but uh, you'll get it right. What is the capital of India? And thirdly, because we've got the old muso next to me, name the Indian instrument that Ravi Shankar plays. Who also, somebody else played it too, didn't George they? George Harrison played it quite a lot on some of the Beatles albums. Yeah. And what does it rhyme? What does it rhyme with? It rhymes with guitar. It rhymes with guitar. They are. Name the instrument that Ravi Shankar plays. So those are all Indian questions anyway. So that is for the wonderful meal for two at the Eastern Eye. So that's a competition. Ring us on Andover 390. 390. 390. 390. Even Steve knows that, don't you? 390. 390. Well done, Steve. Anyway, thanks very much. And now we're going to do the draw for last week's what was last week's competition down farm you've seen it on the show this week again which is wonderful and uh, we had an awful lot of reaction a lot of children phoned in actually and said they really enjoyed it and thanks for phoning in because we want you to phone in if you enjoy even if you don't enjoy something phone in but uh, phone in with your suggestions if you want us to go and film something else as well and send us those holiday videos yes. we want to see them yes. we want to see them on town tv as long as we can put them on town tv i'm not sure about your hat you look like no, a bit I don't of a, like a, a barrow like boy <laughs> it's, it's okay <laughs> right. The competition. I think it looks quite nice, actually, Tan. You can cover your pumpkin up with it. Yeah. It'll grow a bit. Yes, it might grow a bit. Right. The competition. Mm -hmm. Who's going to do the draw? Da 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 oh, da Steve, da you da want to do the draw. Da. It's, it's <laughs> the meal. That's not the meal for two at Finkley Down. It's no. two adults and two children going to Finkley Down. Have a wonderful day out at Finkley Down. And who is it? Who I can't see. Let me see who it is. Oh, who is it? It's. Linda Burnell. Linda Burnell. Linda Burnell. Linda Burnell. You won two adult tickets and two children's tickets to Finkley Down Farm. And you can go and see the pig that says hi to Town TV. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, oh, I better hang on to that. You hang on to that, Tony. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching the show. Hope you've enjoyed all this hilarity. Send in your holiday videos. Don't forget, ring us on 390 390. We'll tell you how to send them in. And I hope you enjoyed all that rock and roll. Did you enjoy that rock and roll? Oh, it was great stuff. It was really, it's good to have good rock and roll in Andover, isn't it's it? Good. Yeah, we can't always be serious on Town TV, yeah. so ring us. 390, 390, send in your holiday videos. Here's the one and only Rod Garfield in the beer tent at the Blues Festival playing his harmonica. Harmonica, harmonica that's what it is. So <laughs> take it away, Rod. Thanks.